Hello, welcome to Unit 6, Lesson 9, Dealing with Negative Numbers. The learning objective for today is to be able to use the idea of doing the same to each side to solve equations that have negative numbers or solutions. So everything that we have done up until this point has been basically with positive numbers. Um, we've looked at tape diagrams, we've looked at um, hangers, and we've also talked about the idea of balance moves. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. In the last lesson, we didn't really force the idea of doing those balance moves and allowed you to reason out. But today, we really are going to be focusing on the idea of showing our work algebraically and doing balance moves to each side of the equation. Remember, as you solve these um, equations, keep in mind that some of them are going to have multiple ways to solve them and i'll show you both ways you really can pick and choose which way you want to um solve them as you're using your balance moves keep in mind the idea of the hanger that if you only do a move to one side then your hanger starts to tip and it's no longer balanced so everything we do today is all about keeping balance for time's sake, we are going to skip the first less, uh, first activity, so go ahead and cross that out. And let's move on to activity two. All right, so here's what I want you to do. Um, you can see you have four equations presented. Three of them have negatives. One of them does not. So I want you to go ahead and try number one on your own. So pause the video. Remember, you should be using balance moves. Um, to solve this, <clears throat> if you get stuck, then at least reason it out, but I want you to really try to do balance moves. So go ahead, pause the video, and work on that. All right, let's take a look at number one. So number one, if you wanted to draw a line down through your equal sign, you can. You don't have to. So if we were to picture our hanger on the left side, we would have a shape with the X in it, and then we would have a shape with the 6 in it. And then on the right side, we would have a shape with the four in it. So that means in order to figure out what X is, I do need to remove the six. And I do that by subtracting it. But whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So now I have four minus six on the right side. Okay, now we should be using our integer rules to help us solve this. So 4 minus 6 is really just 4 plus negative 6. And when the signs are different, you subtract and you always take the sign of the bigger number. 6 minus 4 is 2. And since 6 is the bigger number and it's negative, my answer is going to be negative 2. So therefore, we have 1x equals negative 2. All right, let's look at number two. Now this, oh, wrong way, sorry. Now this one, we have uh, x minus negative four equals negative six. Now we've worked in the past with negative numbers and with subtraction, and we always said change all subtraction to addition. So we're going to rewrite this as an addition problem. And you may or may have guessed, but our addition problem would be x plus four equals negative six. So go ahead, pause the video, and finish the problem from here, showing your balance moves. All right, so to solve this, if I picture my hanger, I would have an x and a four on the left side, and then I would have a negative six on the right side. I know I need to remove the four, so I do that through subtraction. But whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So now on the right side, I have negative six minus four. If we rewrite that as addition, it's negative six plus negative four. And since the signs are the same, we're gonna add them. And then since they're both negative, it's going to be negative 10. So therefore, one X is equal to negative 10. All right, let's move on to number three. Now this is a problem that can be solved two different ways. So I am gonna show you both ways to solve it. 
Again, you don't have to do it both ways. You really just focus on the way that you prefer. Um, just like what we did with the lesson last week or our lesson eight, um, again, two different ways, just whatever you prefer. So the first thing I notice is that I have a two and then X minus one in parentheses is equal to negative 200. So before I do anything, I am gonna rewrite this as addition. So that becomes two and then in parentheses, X plus negative one equals negative 200. So if we think of our tape diagram, or I'm sorry, our hangers, the hanger would look something like this. So on this side, we would have an X and then a negative one and then another X and then another negative one. Where on this side, we have a negative 200. So I can see that my um, left side, I have two groups. So the first thing I can do is I can split everything into two groups by dividing. So when I divide the left side by two, I end up with just x, oops, don't need the parentheses, x plus negative one. And then when I divide the right side by two, negative 200 divided by two is negative 100. Remember with division, if the signs are different, your answer is gonna be negative. Notice by dividing, I didn't divide each individual thing by two. I'm just saying I have two groups of x plus negative one, and I need to get to one group. And the way I get it to one group is I just divide by two. So now from here, it's a little bit trickier, right? Because we have a plus negative one and we haven't really done anything with negatives. We still need to remove it, but if I subtract it, I'm gonna end up with negative two. So instead of subtracting one, I'm actually going to add one. Remember, if you ever get stuck, think of zero pairs, think of opposites, right? We want these two to be opposite of each other in order for them to cancel out. So if I ha have a negative one, I need to add a one to cancel them out. So I'm also gonna add one over here. When I do that, I'm left with one X and then negative one plus 100. So I'm at negative 100 and I move one spot to the right. That's gonna be negative 99. Oops, that's not supposed to be negative one X. Erase that. Okay. So our answer is negative 99. So that's one way of doing it. Let me show you another way of doing it. So again, if we start with, I'm gonna start with the X plus negative one equals negative 200. So our first step could be to use the distributive property. So I can pass the two out to everything inside the parentheses. So I end up with two X plus, then two times negative one is negative two equals negative 200. Okay, from here, I work through isolating the variables. So if we look back at our hanger, I have my two X's and then I have my two negative ones. I need to get rid of those two negative ones. So I think of what will cancel out a negative two. And in that case, it's going to be a positive two. So I'm gonna add two to both sides. From here, I have two X and a negative 200 plus two. So this time I'm moving two part units to the right. And when I do that, I end up at one negative 198. And then from here, I divide by two. If you need to do long division to do this, you can, or you could just use a calculator. 198 divided by two is 99. 
but since a negative divided by a positive, you have to have a negative 99. Now, the benefits of doing it the first way is that notice we take care of the division when it's an easy division problem. 200 divided by 2, we can quickly do on our head. 198 divided by 2 is a different story. Not all of us can quickly do that in our head, and that's okay, um, but it just keep that in mind. There's going to be times when this method is better, but in this case, I probably would have gone with the first method because it just it, the division is much easier this way. All right, so now that we've done the first three, I want you to go ahead, we're going to pause the video again, and I want you to do number four on your own. All right, for number four, if we picture our, our hanger, our hanger says we have two X's on the right, and then a negative three, and then, uh, ooh, on the left I meant, sorry, on the left we had two X's and a negative three, and then on the right we have a negative 23. So we know we need to remove the negative three, but again, you need to think about what will cancel out the negative three. I can't subtract three because that won't cancel it out. Think back to your zero pairs, your opposites. So in this case, we're actually going to add three. Okay, I'm left with two X on the left, negative 23 plus three. Signs are opposite, so I'm going to subtract and then take the sign of the bigger number. So 23 is bigger, so I know I'm gonna have a negative. And then 23 minus three is 20. So I've gotten rid of my negative three. This has negative 20 left. Now I need to split into two groups. So I'm gonna divide both sides by two. And I'm left with one X equals negative 10. It's negative because remember with division, if the signs are opposites, then your answer is negative. So that's it for this activity. Um, the key thing to remember here is making sure that you do the same thing to each side. It's really making sure you have those balanced moves when you're subtraction, working with subtraction or negative numbers. Um, this still applies. It doesn't change. So even though it doesn't really make sense to represent negative numbers um, in the hanger metaphor, so I gave a couple examples, it's kind of hard to represent those as negative because you can't have negative weight. Um, but it still gives us a good visualization of what we need to get rid of. But when you're getting rid of negatives, you really have to think about what will, how to get rid of it. It's not just going to always straight up be subtraction, so keep that in mind. All right, so let's move on to the next activity. All right, in this activity, you're going to be working through an equation that has already um, not been solved, but basically is working backwards through an equation that starts with the solution and then works down to an equation that doesn't have a solution. Um, every step is equivalent to, to the previous equation. So um, basically what we're saying here is that the solution to this equation is negative six. So it doesn't matter at what port, port, part of the table you're in, the solution is still going to be negative six. And we're gonna talk about why we know that it's negative six. So what is what moves are occurring to make sh make it so that everything stays equivalent to each other. All right, so what I would like for you to do is pause the video and I want you to think of what moves are occurring as you move down the table and fill the table out. Once you're done filling the table out, we're gonna go ahead and um, we can restart the video and you can check your work to see if you were right. All right, so as we move down the table, so my first move, I go from x equals negative 6 to x minus 3 equals negative 9. Now, remember this x minus 3 is really x plus negative 3 equals negative 9. So 
how, what happened to make us go from x equals negative 6 to x plus negative 3 equals negative 9? Well, on the left side, it looks like we added a negative 3, um, but if we think of balanced moves, we have to ask ourselves, did we also add a negative 3 to uh, the negative 6? So let's check that. So if I have negative 6 plus negative 3, Remember, the signs are the same, so I will add. And then since they're negative, my answer is going to be negative. So yeah, I can see that there was a balanced move occurring that negative 3 was being added to both sides. Negative 3 was added to both sides, which is a balanced move. So anytime you make a balanced move, the equations will stay equivalent. All right, so now let's move down to um, the next equation. So as we move down to this equation, basically they just flip sides of the equation. Um, so no values change, just they switch sides. So no values change, they just flipped sides. All right, let's move to the next one. So now we're at 900 equals one, negative 100 times x minus 3. So in this case, you need to figure out, well, first of all, how did negative 9 become 900? And I also see how they put x minus 3 in parentheses and they multiply by negative 100. So to me, it looks like they're multiplying both sides by negative 100. Let's double check that with the left side, though. So if I did negative 9 times negative 100, I know I'm going to have 900. And then since the signs are the same in this case, I'll have a positive 900. So I see that they did do a balance move. So both sides were multiplied by negative 100, which again is a balance move. All right, their next step is the, it looks like they move the negative 100 to in front of the x minus 3 to behind the x minus 3. So basically what's happening here is they're using the commutative property. So commutative property was used to rearrange groups on the right. So last time we talked about this idea of commutative property as well and how even though um, you're switching the places of the numbers, the commutative property tells us that's okay because you're still going to end up with the same product when you multiply. And then last but not least, we go to this equation which says 900 equals negative 100x plus 300. So we're asking ourselves, how did this happen? And it looks like they took the negative 100 and did times the negative 3 and times the x. And in case you forgot what that word is, that is called the distributive property. So the distributive property was used, which again, like the similar situation to the commutative property, um, that's okay. When you use the distributive property, you're not changing the value of anything. You're keeping it as <clears throat> it's still staying equivalent to each other. All right, now question two says, I know it says to keep your, keep your work secret from a partner and then start with the equation negative 5 equal x. Do the same thing to each side at least three times to create an equation that has the same solution as the starting equation. 
write the equation you ended up with on a slip of paper and trade equations with your partner. We're actually gonna do this a little differently since we're not able to work with partners um, because I'm not there. We're gonna instead, I am going to give you my work and I want you to try to figure out what I did um, to get to the end equation. So I'm gonna give you three steps and I want you to try to figure out what I did to each step. So my three steps are, so I first start with negative five equals x. From there, I end up with negative two equals x plus three. So that's my first move. And then I end up with negative 20 equals 10 times x plus 3. And then my last move is negative 20 equals 10x plus 30. So go ahead, pause the video, and see if you can figure out what my moves are. All right, so let's see if you can figure it out. So the first move... I went from negative five to a negative two on the left side, and then I added three on the right side. So it looks like I am just adding three to both sides. And I can see if that checks out because I just do negative five plus three, which is negative two. So I added three to both sides. Again, that's a legal move because it is balanced because I'm doing the same thing to both sides. Going to the next step, it looks like I am um, I added a parentheses around the x plus 3 and 10 in front of that, so 10 times it. And then I, got, I went from negative 2 to negative 20. So it looks like we just multiplied by 10 on both sides. And then last but not least, I ended up with 10x plus 30 on the right side. So this tells me that um, the distributive property was used on the right. So hopefully you were able to figure out my moves. Um, so just keep in mind for today's lesson, I know we switched from just positive numbers to now adding in negative numbers. Um, and just essentially what we've been focusing on is how can we solve these equations? And hopefully by now you're proficient with not only just being able to solve them, but being able to solve them using balanced moves. Um, we want to make sure that we are doing the same thing to each side of an equation to keep the equation balanced, even if we have negative numbers. Um, how we approach what we do is a little bit differently because of those negative numbers, but you're still doing the same thing to each side. The other thing I wanna point out is that even, even when we're not solving an equation, as if we're doing the same thing to each side of an equation, those equations are still balanced, even if it doesn't get us closer to the solution. So in this last activity, the moves we were making were taking us farther away from the solution, um, but everything was still equivalent to each other because of those balanced moves. So it, really important that you are making sure you do balanced moves to, to make equivalent equations. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. That's it for today's lesson. Um, thanks for watching.